Today we are looking at hands down the most insane, but probably at the same time the coolest watch in the Spinnaker lineup. The watch is the Spinnaker Picard and this thing is a huge chunk of steel. Also has one of the domiest of domed crystals I think I've ever seen, at least in person. Now everybody's not into the bigger watches like this, but this is a very cool one and I think you might enjoy the video at the very least. Big thanks to Spinnaker. They gifted this watch into the channel. It does not have to be returned, but I just want to be 100% transparent with you guys. So let's get to it and check out the watch. Now, first of all, just look at that side profile. How crazy is this crystal? It looks like it could just take a needle to it and pop it. I don't know. I just get mesmerized by it for some reason. So although it's a completely different look, this watch was inspired by the Deep Sea Special, which was a watch built by Rolex to test how far they could go when it comes to water resistance. It was never a production watch from my understanding, more of just an experiment. And in 1960, they strapped it to the Bathyscaf Trieste, which took it to a depth of nearly 11,000 meters into Mariana's Trench. Really, the only similarity is the crystal, but that's where they took inspiration from when designing the watch. At the moment, these are available in three color options. There's the Volcano Black, the Dark Cerulean, which is a blue version, and the Hunter Green that I have today. So just a heads up, when it comes to the B-roll, and even just right now being hands-on with the watch, it is really hard to control the reflections, and it's also not easy getting close-ups with the dial with so much distortion happening with such an extremely domed crystal, but I will try to do my best. We'll start with the dial and kind of work our way out. The dial on this model is a nice shade of green. I'd call it a forest green with spinnaker applied in steel on the upper portion and the water resistance and automatic on the lower. One thing that I've never seen done in quite this way is the date at the three. The metal that frames the date is connected to the rehote, which is a cool little detail. The Rehote has some text with helium release valve up at the 12 and 300 fathoms across the bottom of the Rehote, which is the watch's water resistance in fathoms. The markers are possibly applied, but at the very least raised markers. The hands are sword style hands, and we have that pop of color on the second hand. The loom is what you want to see on a dive watch like this. The Super Luminova is bright, long-lasting, and is evenly applied, so the markers and hands all fade at pretty well the same rate, so no problems getting the time in low light. The bezel is a 120-click bezel with a matte green ceramic insert, and I think that's a nice look for the watch. Coin edge bezel, so no problems with grip. The action is crispy. It's a solid-feeling action. Nice sound as well. Go around one more time so you can hear that maybe a bit better. Yeah. Very happy with the bezel. The case is a chunky one. It is 100% brushed. On this side, we have the helium release valve. Nice curvature of the lugs from the side profile here, but you can see it is quite the slab of steel. And... That along with the crystal make this a very thick watch. The signed screw down crown is also very large, which is a good thing. Very easy to grip, unscrew and set the date and time. Feels really smooth to unscrew and screw back in. And the winding action is very smooth as well, considering the movement, which is the NH35. The case back is a screw down case back and has an image of a bathyscaphe along with some of the watch's specifications. The bracelet is a heavy duty one with fairly thick links. It uses push pins for sizing and overall feels sturdy, which you definitely want on a heavier watch like this. The clasp is well made as well, although we only have 
three micro adjust, but I was able to get a good fit for my wrist size. The only negative would be the stamped steel dive extension. Considering how heavy the rest of the watch is, how heavy duty the rest of the watch is, it would have been nice to have a more solid one, but otherwise I'm okay with the bracelet as is overall. Size-wise, the watch comes in at a case with 45.2 millimeters. Lug-to-lug -lug is 52.1 millimeters, which is on the long side, but the bracelet doesn't drape straight down, so you end up with an effective lug-to-lug -lug of 58.1 millimeters. Lug opening is 22 millimeters, and the thickness, including the domed crystal, is 21.1 millimeters, so some pretty big numbers there. Water resistance on the watch is 550 meters, and that gigantic domed crystal is sapphire with an anti-reflective treatment. And here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, and it actually hugs the wrist really well. Check out this crazy crystal distortion. I think that's just wild. So yeah, it's actually pretty comfortable all considering. Two things I'd like to see with the watch, though. One is the water resistance. 550 mil meters is a lot, but with such an extreme-looking diver and more extreme water resistance would bump up the cool factor, I think. Not that I'd ever need it, obviously, but it would have been nice. The other is the movement. The NH35 is a tried-and-true solid movement, but I feel like at the price point for these, maybe a 9000 series Miyota would have been better. Cost-wise, these come in at 550 USD, but if you buy before Jan 30th, there is a 25% discount available. If you're shopping any other watches of theirs, as long as they're not on sale, you can also use my discount code time to go 20 for 20% 20 off your purchase. So that is it. Really appreciate you taking a few minutes to stop by and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.